In this video, you will learn about the integral test. The integral test is nice, and it's better than the nth term test uh, sometimes, because the integral test actually checks for both convergence or divergence of a series. Uh, so this is a very handy test, and um, as we'll see very shortly, it, it involves using integrals, and so we have lots of techniques for integration, so we'll be able to use those to determine if a series converges or diverges. Let's look at an example of how it works. The integral test is based on the fact that a summation from n equals 1 to infinity is sort of like an integral from 1 to infinity. They're both sums, because this is the Greek letter sigma, s for sigma, for sum, and this is an elongated s for, same thing, sum. And if you remember, like an integral is like a Riemann sum, and sum, sum, sum. Okay, you get it. The other idea is that this function here, the a sub n that we're adding up, is similar to this f of x dx, where it's the function that we're adding up. So when we do the integral test, these are going to be related. Uh, and the main key here is that we're going to pick f of x to basically be whatever we're adding up in our summation. So a sub n is going to equal f of x. Now, the integral test only works if a sub n satisfies the following conditions. They must, the terms must all be positive, so this does not work for alternating series. They must be continuous, which is pretty easy to do. Most of these functions are continuous. They probably won't trick you with that. And they all have to be decreasing. Um, now, the one that... So, so, do a quick check. If it's not alternating, just make sure all the terms are positive. Most of them will be continuous, so we won't have to worry about that. In terms of checking to see whether or not the function is decreasing, um, one way you can do that is to do the nth term test. Because if the series, if the if the terms actually go down to zero, it means that they're probably decreasing down to zero, and that means that we're decreasing. So if the nth term test gives you zero, then the integral test is a good place to start after that. Here's what the integral test says about these two things. It bas it's very simple. It basically says that if one of them converges, the other must also converge, or if one of them diverges, the other one must diverge. So I like to say that they go hand in hand, together. And so both converge, or both of them diverge. C is for converge, D is for diverge. Um, and Usually, when we use the integral test, we're actually going to be looking at the integral to tell us whether or not the integral converges or diverges, and then using the integral test will determine whether the series, this is for series, this is for integral, then we'll determine whether, to, whether the series converges or diverges based on what the integral says. Behold an example. Let's look at this. Now, upon first inspection, uh, the nth term test gives us zero, because we have, if we, if we L'Hopital this, or if we Bobo Botten this, we get 1 over 2n, and that's going to go to zero. Uh, so we do need to use a different test. Now, let's use the integral test, because that's what we're learning in this video. Hooray! So what we're going to do is, instead of doing the sum from 1 to infinity, we're going to integrate from 1 to infinity, and we're going to integrate, instead of n, we're going to integrate x over x squared plus 1. And now you have to remember all your integral rules. Guess what? This is a u sub, so we're going to say u equals x squared plus 1. And the du is 2x dx, so I need to doctor with a 2 and a counterbalance with a 1 half. This is going to give me 1 half on the outside. Integral from 1 to infinity of 1 over u du, which, if you remember, is the natural log. So our answer is 1 half, natural log, absolute value, x squared plus 1, uh, close that, and then evaluated from 1 to infinity. Make sure, again, that if you're doing a u substitution, go back to the x's before you plug in the x values on your limits. Now we will plug them in. 1 half natural log infinity minus 1 half natural log of and notice, very clearly, that the natural log of infinity goes to infinity, and therefore this integral is infinite. Hmm, what does that mean? Well, it means that the integral is infinite, and because, according to the integral test, the integral and the summation go hand in hand, they go together, therefore the summation also goes to infinity. And that's it. That's the integral test. So it's very simple. 
we just take this function, turn it into an in integral, do the integral, and then if the integral is a number, then the series converges. If the integral is not a number, then the series diverges. Some of you might be asking why, um, and some of you might be asking why am I still doing this, but here's why the integral test works. There are two cases. In the first case, both of them converge, and in the second case, both of them diverge. In the first case, we'll look at the actual integral first. So we have the integral of f of x dx. That integral is represented by, and, and we're going from 1 to infinity, uh, and so we have a positive decreasing continuous function, so it looks something like that. And remember that the integral is the area under this curve. And I'm comparing this to not equal to, but comparing this to a summation of basically a sub n's. And so a sub 1, we could think of as a rectangle that has a height, sorry, a sub 1, is a rectangle that has height f of 1 and a base of 1. And so I can draw that rectangle here, base of 1, height of f of 1, because this is this y value here is f of 1 because the x value is 1. And so this shaded area here represents a sub 1. Similarly, at 2, I can draw a rectangle here that represents a sub 2. And here is a sub 3, and a sub 4, and a sub 5, etc., etc., etc. And notice that the red rectangles are always underneath the integral. See that? There's all this extra space here. Um, and so Basically, if the integral converges, therefore, we can draw the summation so that the summation is always underneath that integral, and so the integral kind of squeezes it down and makes sure that the, the summation converges. On the other hand is the divergent case, in which case we have the same, almost the same picture, actually. So we need our integral, which is here. Now, remember with diverging integrals, you can still have integrals that go down to zero and they look like they might converge, but they don't actually converge. An example would be the integral of 1 over x dx, which we'll talk about in a second. Um, but basically, the idea here is that this integral from 1 to infinity diverges. And so this shaded area here is actually infinite and does not converge to a number. Well, we're comparing this again to the summation of a sub n. And just like last time, we're going to draw a rectangle that represents each one. And so in this case, a sub 1 is again going to be f of 1 times, so the, a height of f, f of 1 and a base of 1. But the way we're going to draw it is a little bit different, and we're actually going to shift it over. So the a sub 1 is here with a base of 1 and a height of f sub 1, and so this rectangle here represents a sub 1. Similarly, 2 will go from, like the base will go from 2 to 3, the height will be at f sub 2, and this will be a sub 2, and then a sub 3, and a sub 4, and a sub 5, etc., etc., etc. And notice here that there is extra area uh -oh, on top. And so what happens here is that the summation is bigger than the integral. Oh, but the integral was infinite. Therefore, the summation is also infinite. And so in this case, in the divergent case, the integral sort of pushes the summation off to infinity.